hello, I'm Debbie Gatlin, and I want to thank you for taking time to count the Omar with me. We know this, that the Omar is a period of time between Pesach or Passover all the way to Shavuot or Pentecost. And it's a seven-week period of time of counting. And really, it's a time where we prepare our hearts. And Omar is just a measurement. It's a measurement where that was waved before, a measurement of barley at first fruits, waved before the Lord as a thank offering. And then the next crop would be at Shavo Oats, which was the wheat harvest. So during that time period, they're counting the Omar, preparing their hearts to get ready to receive the law again, to be prepared for more of God. And we as God's people, we are preparing our hearts to receive God's word. But as Christians, we receive the, the infilling, the, the fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, Jesus said, the, that, that you will receive power after the Holy Spirit's come upon you and you will be my witnesses from Jerusalem, Judea, to Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. He's saying, I'm giving you power to walk this out. I'm giving you power to, to bring the word of God, the law, the Torah. I'm, bringing you, I'm giving you power to take God's word and bring it to the nations so that they may be saved. So we're going to say Psalm 67 together and just declare it and ask God to bless us because we need the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow to it, the Bible says. But we know we need God's blessing so that we can be a blessing. Psalm 67, God be gracious to us and bless us. Cause thy face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on the earth, your salvation to the nations. Let the people praise you, O God. Let the people praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you will judge the world with uprightness and the nations of the earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let the people praise you. The earth has yielded its produce. God, our God, blesses us. God blesses us that all the ends of the earth may fear him. And so we're going to declare the blessing tonight. If you're Jewish, you could say this. This is traditional. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with your commandments and count, commanded us to count the Omar. If you're a Gentile believer in Yeshua, then you may want to say this. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us through Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and commanded your people to count the Omar. Today is the 30th day, which is four weeks and two days of counting the Omar. And we are on glory and splendor because our God is glorious. He is full of splendor. He is a majestic, marvelous, weighty with power and glory and might over his life. And we know that that glory is what? It's an abundance of wealth and riches. It's honor. It's everything good. It's splendor. It's majesty. Glory is weightiness. It's something that can be seen. It can be felt. It's unending abundance. Come on. And so glory, it says kabog, which I just put weight in the good sense, abundance and supply or quality. Splendor, reverence, reputation, dignity, honor. Come on. It's everything good. It's everything right. It crosses to this, in a good sense, numerous, rich, honorable, weighty. And then it says great, noble, prevailing, promote to honor, heavy, to be rich, be honorable, to make, made, make abundant, to get oneself glory. God's glory, okay, where we left off yesterday is God's glory can be seen. And we declared ex Exodus 16, 6 to 7, where they were grumbling and complaining, the Lord came and said to them, you will see the glory of the Lord in the morning. Come on. In Exodus 16, 10, Aaron told them that he called the congregation together. And as they were looking toward the wilderness, behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. So we're going to talk about how the glory of the Lord appears in a cloud. You know, we know this, that the children of Israel were led by day by what? A cloud, a mighty, huge cloud led them by day through the wilderness, you mean it had to be huge for all those people to see this cloud. And then we know at night it was that the cloud turned into this pillar of fire, which probably was just a lightning cloud with all this lightning and fire going on inside of it. So Exodus 40 verse 34 says that the cloud covered the tents of the meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. 
So over and over, 2 Chronicles 5, 14, the priests couldn't minister because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. They couldn't minister. There was so much weight and so much power in this cloud. There, there was the glory of God which caused them to be unable to even move. Mark 13, 26 says, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Exodus 13, 21, The Lord was going before them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them on the way, and a pillar of fire by night to give them light, that they might travel by day or by night. Ezekiel 10, 4, Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherubims to the threshold of the temple, and the temple was filled with a cloud, and the court was filled with the brightness of the glory of the Lord. Oh, yeah. Second Chronicles 5, 13, In unison, when the trumpets and the singers were made to be heard with one voice to praise and to glorify the Lord, and when they lifted their voices, accompanied by trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and when they praised the Lord, saying, He is indeed good, for His loving kindness is everlasting, then the house, the house of the Lord was filled with the cloud. Oh, yeah, it's the glory of the Lord. Ezekiel 1, 28, this is the last one we'll do. As the appearance of the rainbow in the clouds on the rainy day, so was the appearance of the surrounding ra radiance, such in splendor. One of the definitions for splendor is just radiance, this light, this glory sparkles and shines, this radiance. Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when they saw it, they fell on their face and heard a voice speaking. So from the Bible, this is the cloud of glory. And I'm just going to name what the, the cloud of glory does. So the cloud of glory it has special appearances. So it appeared at the murmuring of Israel. At Korah's death, the cloud of glory appeared. And then the cloud of glory at the murmuring of Israel on the reports of the spies appeared. Remember, cloud of glory appeared at the rebellion of Korah. The cloud of glory appeared... And at the Sadiq, at when Moses and Aaron, I mean, when Aaron and Miriam were complaining about Moses, the cloud of glory appeared at Christ's Christ transfiguration. The cloud of glory appeared at the murmuring of the bread. The cloud of glory appeared as a pillar of cloud and a fire by night. The cloud of glory was, was dark to the enemies of Israel, but was light to the people of God. Remember, they, they went behind the, the camp and stood before Egypt and between Israel and e Egypt. The, the cloud of glory is called a cloud. The cloud of glory is the protection of the church. The cloud of glory is special appearances at Christ's ascension. It was manifest in the temple of Solomon. And then it says, um, the cloud of glory. And I have all these scriptures of where these, this is at, of the cloud of glory. It was designed to show light to Israel. The cloud of glory came down. The cloud of glory manifest. The cloud of glory continued during the journey of Israel. The cloud of glory was, was designed to defend Israel, right? The cloud of glory was designed to cover the tabernacle. The cloud of glory was designed to guide Israel. All these things, the cloud of glory, the cloud of glory came, God came down in. The cloud of glory God manifested in. The cloud of glory he showed his light to Israel through. The cloud of glory God spoke through. The cloud of glory our Lord shall make his second appearance through. The cloud of glory was designed to regulate the movements of Israel. The cloud of glory is an illustration of the glory of Christ. The cloud of glory called the presence of God. The cloud of glory first manifested, manifestation of was in Exodus 13, 20 through 21. The cloud of glory called uh, the cloudy pillar. The cloud of glory was the Shekinah over the mercy seat. The cloud of glory, special appearances, and I already did this of, at Korah's death. And then um, the murmuring, we already did this. The cloud of glory, the cloud of the Lord. So the cloud of glory, it illustrated the ascension of Christ, the cloud of glory. God wants to show his glory. I've been um, listening to different preachers talk about the glory of God. And I've, I've seen on, the, on a videotape the cloud of glory that was manifest at Bethel. And you could just see this beautiful cloud come in. And it's full of sparkles. It just sparkles. And it just was moving 
around about and they were take they were taking pictures of this cloud of glory. I know Randy Clark has seen the cloud of glory. He was talking about how the cloud of glory came and, and a lot of times and Kenneth Hagin was talking about the cloud of glory when he could see the cloud of glory. He knew that the healings were going to take place. God is a God of glory. He's a God of splendor and he often shows himself in a cloud, a cloud, a cloud of glory. And when the cloud of glory is there, it's there for a reason. It shifts the atmosphere. It brings his presence. It protects. It provides for. And yes, it brings judgment against the wicked. God's cloud of glory. Now let's keep on counting the Omar together. And remember that God Almighty is a God of glory. He's a God of weightiness, of splendor and majesty. He's a God of abundance. There's nothing lacking. And he can often show himself as a cloud of glory, the Shekinah glory, the manifest presence of God Almighty, seen by your eyes, seen. Come on. So, Father, I just thank you, Father God, for the 30th day of counting the Omar. Now, bless your people, Father God. God, I just thank you. Make us be like Moses that say, I want to see your glory. I want, I want to see your glory, God. If I found favor, let me see your glory. We ask this now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, God bless you. Let's keep counting the Omar together. Bye-bye.